Yes, welcome back ladies and gentlemen, tankers of Blitz Universe to the channel. My name is Martin Dogger and this is the BC Burrasque, the Batignon Chateau Burrasque, a tier 8 French premium medium tank with a two-shot autoloader, affectionately known as Borat in the World of Tanks Blitz community, obviously by skill for LTU. And this tank, it is great. It's also in a crate, in boxes, which is stupid. And I have once vowed to never make videos about crate tanks, uh, period. But I'm still gonna sort of persevere with this because I'm a scrub. I'm making videos. And I'll, I'll keep telling you not to buy crates, just just don't. But this tank, it, it just doesn't look good. It, it's not just the looks. I mean, it looks really good. It is cute, it is low slung. And it just, it, it ticks all the boxes for me. It really does. It is... It's a great tank. I've played far too much already in this tank yeah, on the press account. You can see that. Here is the brief overview with the hit points, etc. If you put it on uh, the bigger one, you're going to see it like this. It, this is the main problem over there. The damage per minute. It's just not good. The magazine reload time is quite long. I could get it a little bit better by using uh, the vents, as you can see. Damage per shot, 320. There's 640 alpha in. Boom. Boom, just like that, two seconds between the shots. Penetration-wise, not brilliant, 199, but 252 on your uh, APCR. But 58 on high explosive is, is fair enough, which means you do get the potential for 1000 HE damage. This is one great looking machine. And what we're going to do, don't buy crates, that's for sure. What we're going to do is I'm going to th show you three games. The first one is going to be this one, as you can see on a uh, Winter Melanovka. Um, we are obviously uh, bottom tier, or obviously we are bottom tier. I'm going to show you three bottom tier games, by the way, just just for good measure. Um, I've mentioned already you should not buy crates, so in that regard, this is not uh, a, a really good ad or a review. But I want to show the tank anyway. Just don't buy the crates. Um, what should you do in this tank? You have to be sneak. I've named it the French Assassin. And this tank, it, it is, it has a few very good things. One of these is uh, this. Like, there we go. Once, and there we go. Uh, twice. Thank you very much. Then you will have to run away. I'm bouncing a shot here, which actually bounced, as you can see. Uh, sorry. As you can see right over there on my gun. See, the gun is broken. Uh, that's where I bounce a shot. I, I think it hit the gun and then the mantlet. I'm going to bounce another one from that SU-1 to 254. But yeah, that just doesn't work. But, but take a look at this. I'm, I'm moving over here towards a little house, knocking this fence down. And I'm thinking, uh, do I have shots available? Do I have shots available? No. Take a look at this. 245 meters once and twice. Thank you very much. And I'm not spotted. I am not spotted. This tank has a camo rating that's just through the freaking French roof. The, the Fiddler would fall off. It is through the roof. It's insane. And above all, don't buy crates. Um, but this camo rating, it's better than the AMX 3090. It's slightly better than the 54 lightweight. It's better than the RU251. It's better than the FV301. This is a medium tank with a two-shot autoloader that has a light tank camo rating. It's not as good as the E25, but in tier 8, if you sit still, you have better camo rating than all the... Uh, light tanks available in, in the game. Obviously when the light tank is driving that one has better camo rating and you can see um, I'm getting shot up the ass. That's not really good But yeah, what we had to do that we went on a flank I'm just sitting there. I'm reloading you want to figure out where you need to sit because you have to wait like 18 and a half seconds But if you can do stuff like this and I'm gonna use HC. I, I should have bought it. I should have gone with uh, with the APCRs, but yeah, okay fair enough we have uh, made mince meat of this Borschig, of the Rheinmetall Borschig Waffenträger. Just shot him twice. He went down so quickly. It's th this is a great tank. And then take a look at the gun pressure. I mean, it's not not too bad whatsoever. There we go. Uh, boom. And watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Bounce. Again on the gun. <laughs> Again on the gun. This was a bit lucky, obviously. But it shows what the tank is about. As long as you have enemies sort of grouped together, you can just B 
be that sneaky drive-by shooter, that lone assassin, then you're going to do just fine. You can see me popping over the hill, shooting twice, reversing away behind the church, behind the rock, just taking my time to get two shots back in the magazine. This is what you have to do. It is a really, really sneaky tank. And we're going to shoot this guy on the move. On the move, it, it is it's also slightly better than, uh, than the uh, light tanks at tier 8. But it is not a tank that excels at sniping. You want to run this one close, uh, up close and personal. Not too close. It is not made for close combat. But other than that, it is a fun drive. It, it just it just is. Martin, you've vowed to never uh, promote crate tanks. No, you shouldn't buy crates. That's for sure. Just, just don't. This tank will come for sale later on. It will probably be... 15,000 gold for the first time it comes around in, in tier 8 in, in, in a regular bundle, maybe 12,500. This, this will be a fan favorite, like the Scorpion G, like the Progetto. This one won't come for 5,000 like the SCG did lately or, or, or the last time it was around. This one won't come for 6,000 gold or whatever. This one will be available for gold at a fairly, fairly high price. So, again, don't buy crates. It is stupid. It, it only gives wargaming money and, and far too much at that. But still, this tank is good. So I have another two games, guys. Honestly, I, I just I just want to show them. They're really good. And I'm, I'm at a loss here what to do. I have no clue what to do. I mean, take a look at the lineup. Amul 2, 3-shot autoloader. Uh, Skoda T50, 3-shot uh, autoloader. Amex 1500, 3-shot autoloader. Chimera Phantom, really big gun. You can hurt me, like, like really bad. Uh, SU-130 PM Scarface. They want to get shot by that guy. Uh, 54 Mod 1, that might be a, a little bit annoying. But what we're going to do here, once and again up the butt. So why is there was stupid? I should have waited just a little bit longer, but I was a bit scared about that guy turning around and then seeing the other tanks on the flank and the SU-130, etc, etc. So I decided to go up over here. Uh, Take my time again and then just keep driving around, driving around, driving around. Y you have to go to flanks all the time. The SU-130 PM Scarface is going to go down. This guy has shot a fair few times. There we go. One and aim for the drive wheel and boom. He's tracked. Uh, sitting over there on that uh, uh, real uh, uh, railroad car. A uh, little bit of fortune that didn't get any assistance damage out of him. But okay, fair enough. He has been taken out. We are uh, one tank in the lead. Can we sh find a shot on that guy? Now, now take a look. I mean, he's <laughs> he's completely overangled, and I still can't pen the side of that Tiger too. It's not the best one this tank in terms of uh, penetrating people. Uh, the heavy tank. You have to flank with it. But what you can do? Boom! There we go. Straight through the drive view, and there we go. Another one. Thank you very much. 400. I think it's the max roll actually on the tank. If you get that twice, guys, honestly. Honestly, it, you just hit people so damn hard. And I make a bit of a mistake here by uh, by popping out uh, too early. Because I thought I was reloaded and I wasn't. But uh, we're going to clear this guy anyway. There we go. Thank you. Can we shoot somebody else? No, we can't. No, we can't. Hello, Skoda. Yes, we can. There we go. Only track damage, but fair enough. Um, as said, it, it is a sneaky tank. And, and this game is sort of playing out like i wanted to but take a look at that we have a few tanks on the flank that might fall and who have actually fallen now the the 5100 is up against the uh, chimera and i realize that he is on the long long reload as you can see so what we are going to do we're going to go towards the chimera and we're going to shoot him uh once and we're going to shoot him uh twice thank you and just by that time we are now panicking a little bit, but thank you very much, AMX 5100. He's going to help us. He's right over there. That's good. We're going to sit here, get a shot once. Chimera has been taken out. And at this point, I'm thinking, oh boy. Oh boy. Skoda T50 at, uh, well, let's face it, nearly full health. Nearly full health. So can we shoot him? Yes, we can. He shoots us. Um, and I'm, I'm not quite realizing yet that this is the single shot tank. I think it's the single shot version of the Skoda T50. I'm not, I'm not even sure if it has a single shot possibility. 
I think it does. And the reason why is at uh, just about half a minute from now, he's going to pop the adrenaline. And you can't use adrenaline on pod loaders. Uh, and it's right about over here. This is, this is when I start realizing this is a tank with a single shot gun. We're going to shoot him once. There we go. He pops one into the building so we can uh, bounce, of, bounce on the front of the T-54 Mod 1. And then I'm realizing he's a single shot gun. That's good. Um, he's down to uh, clippable for me. The Mod 1 is down to clippable. No, 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 no. Move, 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 move. The Mod 1 is down to clippable. So, all we need to do is reload, take a look at the AMX 5100, he has got three shots in the magazine, he's going to shoot once, and he is tracked, which is a little bit in the foyer, so we're going to shoot the Skoda there once, and we're going to bounce, and we're going to blow him up, thank you very much. And that means that we can now really start work on the Mod 1, and I, th I said it was clippable, but with a little bit of help from my friends. AMX 5100 hit that Mod 1, we can now start work on the mod one over there because he's now down to clippable for us and i'm held down take a look at the at the silhouette of this tank it is so low slung he misses the shot and we're going to shoot him again right in the cupola at this close range borat will do just fine and dandy but if you have really big tanks against you it's not going to work out that fine nearly 4k damage as you can see three kills uh, we made a little bit of credits as well. We get 90k extra because of our um, our ace, as you can see. So yeah, this is not bad. I mean, no tank repairs, no camouflage resupply. In terms of credits, that we go. Martin, do you have another game for us? Yes, we have. Let's roll on to Rockfield. And as you can see, it's again uh, a bottom tier match. Two tier 9 tanks available on the red team. And it is a 50 TP, which I think is interesting, actually, because the tier 9 is a 50 TP and the uh, tier 8 is a 53 TP. So that would make a 47 TP at tier 10, but that gets to be a 60 TP. So, yeah. Yeah, as you 152 says uh, barbecue to me instead of uh, Borat, but, uh, well, he's still there on. It would, might, might be a good, good name as well. And I know Borat may be a little bit controversial, but... It's just the name that sticks. The name sticks into your head, Borat. That's what the tank is going to be. Can we shoot that guy? No, we cannot. So we're not going to do that. We're going to wait just a little bit until this FE301 is going to pop up, which he's going to do right about now. One shot into the, uh, what is it? The IS-5, and there we go. Slingshot <laughs> around the bend, around the rocks. It sometimes just works. And then you shoot somebody. Um, I'm going to bugger off now. Why is that? Take a look at the minimap. Two tanks were spotted. Only one tank spotted now. And we have two sniping heavies. I have no clue where they are. Martin, you have a lot of support. Yeah. That's true. I have a lot of support. But I don't have a lot of armor. Especially against an SU-130 PM. I do not want to get hammered by uh, Martin in the action 10. I do not want to get whacked by an SU-152. I do not want to get hammered by the standard B because that has hash and that would mean that I'd be gone pretty quickly. So we're going to sit in the bush again and then we're going to go forward and we're going to try and clear that SU-130. And I was thinking we might get some help from both of these heavies, but it turned out to be that one of them started sniping. So let's just, let's just go hunting. For this SU-130 PM. Here we go. We're going to shoot him once. There we go. Lovely. 440. And we're going to shoot him twice. Thank you. 397. 800 damage from the clip of a tank with this mobility. With this burst potential. It is... It's... It's just such a nice tank. Don't buy crates. Uh-uh-uh. Don't buy crates. Don't do it. It is stupid. You should not buy crates because it's not worth your money. Just wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. It will come back later on. But all in all, it, the tank is there, guys. And, and I might as well show you why it is there. And I know Meezy doesn't like the crates and, and nobody likes the crates. And all the tier 8 tanks now come in crates. And we've heard uh, Wargaming about that. And the reason is that it makes them... A lot more money than it does with regular tanks. But what you should not do is buy crates. And just because you want a tank. It is. It's not worth it. If, if you have. I don't know. Mystery crates with guaranteed. Thingies with a guaranteed uh, a reward. Then it might be a thing. But 
with these tanks, just wait. Just wait, like I'm doing over here. Make a bit of a mistake. We're going forward too quickly, so I'm spotting, and that means that the FE301 is uh, uh, putting his sights already on me, and he's now behind a bit of a rock. So we're going to drive up into the back of this uh, bush, and we're going to wait here just a little bit. And yes, I know my team is getting slaughtered, but we need to take this guy out first. And if you've taken a look at his uh, hit point pool, that means we should be able to finish him off. At this point, I was actually thinking it has 330 in terms of, um, of, of damage. So not 320. And a little bit unlucky with the uh, with the shots over here. But he seems to think, and I'm not quite sure, Mr. Jan Sivinski from the 124 clan. He, he seems to think that I've got three or four shots in the magazine. And I don't. And he misses a fair few. I'm not sure why. And he bounces one on, I think, the front plate. But we now have to deal with a 50 TP at a fairly healthy amount of hit points and then actually 130 pim and I have no clue where that guy is I mean he hasn't been spotted I know he's down to clippable one shotable for for me with HE twice if I would even bounce his gun I would probably kill him uh, if I would shoot HE twice and I would kill him for sure with APCR but first things first we have to keep driving around and make sure we go to a spot where they don't expect us and at this point, I was thinking that 50 TP, he has nowhere to go. I will, unless he comes around the corner. But if I have a clear line of sight, I will spot him earlier than he does me. I mean, my view range is a little bit better than his. And especially the camo rating. But luckily, he decides to go into the cap. Thank you very much. I know at where at least one tank is. And from the cap timer, I could deduce already it is one tank. So we're going to drive up like this. Aim over the side. I think the gun depression on the tank. Well, what is it? Eight degrees or so. We're gonna watch in the garage. I think it's eight degrees. And we have reset the cap twice. And again, take a look at these hit points. Five hundred and forty-eight. That's clippable. You're constantly driving around, trying to figure out where can I do six forty damage thereabouts. Where can I make tanks into one shots for me, or one clips for me, or one shots for my teammates? And then you're constantly on the lookout for tanks that you can finish off. And then hopefully finish off and also drive away unscathed. We've uh, got one minute and uh, 32 seconds left on the timer of this, uh, this game. As you can see, we have one kill and we have a fairly healthy amount of hit points, which is good. Um, and we're going to drive over here and we're going to spot the issue. There he is. Hello. First shot. Misses. He misses as well. So I'm going to take my time and clear him. There we go. And barbecue. Beep. Yes, we did. We just fired up the grill. And, um, but but it's all right now. We're going to sit over there. We have cover from the Reshi 130 p.m. We have cover from the bushes. So two shots in the magazine. Hello, 53 TP. There we go. A one. And nice roll. There we go. Uh, two. Nice. Good game. Really, really good game. And I was thinking like this. This is... Borat gameplay from World of Tanks from the PC version. This is how you should play, in my opinion, the, the Burask Noir with the camouflage. Because it is just, it's such a fun drive if you get it. Don't buy crates. Don't buy crates. If you eventually get it, then it's going to be a really good one. We will take a look quickly at what the gun impression is. I think it is 8 degrees. It is only 6. Feels like 8 to be honest, but uh, yeah. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, tankers of Blitz Universe. The Burat Noir, don't buy crates, but it is available in World of Tanks at the moment anyway. If you find one of these, hunt them down, because in the hands of a skilled player who knows what he's doing, this is going to be a really deadly French assassin. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheers, happy tanking. Bye-bye.